Our family will be generous with one another. Well, we've come to the end. I don't hear applause yet. <laughs> Fold your applause. Not done. But we have come to the end. This is the end of the sermon series. It's the end of the section that uh, we've been looking at. It's the last sermon in a longer sermon series than what we usually have. And I, I hope that it's been a blessing and that you've been blessed by spending time thinking about and applying the one and other passages. As we know, our thoughts and our main passages were organized by the display board that you see up. Um, that's often bought by a family and displayed in a home. But because we are also a family, this is where we gather. We've had this board downstairs on the wall for many months, and I looked at it and I thought, well, that would make some good sermon starters. And also a reminder afterwards to take a look at it and say, yeah, we did that. Where am I at with those? And so that's now hanging up again back downstairs. The board, the way that they've organized it, it's a reminder of several of the one another passages. These passages were written to several congregations in several places, but no matter where they were written to, they were to be at work applying the truths. And we're going to try to, and we have tried to, apply these truths to our local work. Including today, we've had 11 and 42. 11 topics, 42 main texts. Did you memorize them all? Maybe not even the 11, right? <laughs> but there's something about the passages, and that's the next part. Isn't it good that God has written these concepts on our hearts? Amen. When we read these, it's not necessarily like they were new information. Oh, I never heard of that. I didn't think we should love and accept one another. Serve one another? Where did that come from? That's new. None of that was groundbreaking in that way because God has already written them in our heart. In the church and in our homes, when we love and accept one another in genuine ways from the heart, we put that into action. Our love and acceptance of one another is shown as we, now see if you can remember them, pray for one another, avoid lying and tell the truth to one another, we're kind to one another as Christ lives in us and through us, we share the hope that we have because of Jesus and bring joy to one another as we serve one another. And by doing so, we serve Jesus. We're reminded of the need to be patient with one another, to comfort one another. As we're called to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. Last week, we combined the call to honor one another with the value of Remembrance Day in honoring our military history, which has led us to the concluding aspect today of being generous with one another. And we flip those last two at the end. And I think it's a fitting end to say, in all of it, we still become generous. That's what God wants. Our love and acceptance of one another shows up in our generosity. And it is God who enables us and motivates us to be generous. As Dick has already mentioned, and his definition which was good because I wasn't putting it in mind so that it fits together. But just think of how generous God is. Did you wake up this morning? Who gave you that? Did you eat anything? Yeah. I didn't drive here. Did you drive here? Who gave you that? Alan was a little wondering. He's had car issues this week. So any blessing we have, and already the blessings we've had today, where did they come from? God. We didn't wake up to a blizzard. And if we did, God would enable us to get through. But God is generous. He constantly blesses us. See, and there's something about being a ministry family. See, our family sees that generosity of the church every day. Every day. Think of it this way. God has blessed you with an income, which you have chosen to share some of it for the work here, which pays for a minister family. It pays for our time and experience. It pays for our home, our utilities, our groceries, our vehicle, any money we have in the bank. If it doesn't come from the government, it comes from this congregation. That's kind of unique, isn't it? We see God's generosity Every time we open the pantry, every time we hop in the van and it's still got gas, 
Every time it breaks down, we got to repair it. We see the generosity in a way that I think a lot of people miss because we know whom it comes from. That's powerful. So to think of generosity, I think of our congregation and the mutual aspect of it, that we want to be generous back. It goes both ways. But it led me to this question. Do you see God at work meeting all of your needs and most of your wants in the same way? Do you see it as actually coming from God? Because we do, and we talk about it as a family, the generosity of our congregation and the opportunity to be able to work here. That's just mainly talking about our financial blessings, let alone all the other ways that God blesses us so that we are a blessing to others. Seeing how God blesses us helps us to be generous to others as we serve one another in love. Amen. But if we don't see that it comes from God, if we don't connect to God as the source of our generosity, if we think we've made it or this belongs to me or I deserve this, we're probably going to be more... We didn't talk about antonyms, opposite words. If you're not generous, you might be... Who came up with stingy? <laughs> Frugal might be a little... That's a little better... You know, but really, if you're not being generous, what are you being? Are you being the blessing that God has called you to be? Are you going to receive the blessing of being generous the same way? No, we miss out on something. And our family, our church family, will be generous to who? To one another. To anyone. To our congregation. Starts here and goes to our community as well. Thank you for your generosity. Greg likes to do these part one, part two. So part two is going to be getting into the passages. But do you understand the concept of what we're talking about? And here's my main point. Thank you for your generosity. For the second part, we're taking a look at the passages. <clears throat> Today's passages, as were listed on the board, include Proverbs 22.9, Acts 2.42, 1 Timothy 6, 1 Peter 4.9, and I've added in Romans 12 and 2 Corinthians 9. I didn't write them on the board, I just added them into the sermon. So you have to add them into your own board if you have one. First passage, Proverbs 22.9, about generosity. The first one is about the reciprocal nature of generosity. When we're generous to others, how does God view that? In Proverbs 22.9, that's from our food hampers this week. A generous man will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. And so this week, did you know you were generous? Did you know that you handed out six hampers on Friday? 24 people. 24 people. We were a blessing to 24 people as a congregation, and each of us were a part of it. And God blesses us for the blessing that we are to others. We know what this is like, though. When we invite people in for a meal, we invite people in for a, a coffee or a cold Coke. That sounds good. There's, it's more than the food, isn't it? There's a blessing in being generous. The hospitality is more than just sharing the food with one another. We're blessed because we're a blessing to others, and we see that when we share. This is a passage we focus on quite significantly because of uh, five aspects of on-purpose living. And you'll see them up here on the banner. They come, they're all mentioned within this passage, Acts 2, 42 through 47. But I want to notice how it begins. They devoted themselves. That's an important aspect. They devoted themselves. That is the first church, the first gathering when they were first baptized and they gathered together as a congregation. They go from Judaism to Christianity. What did they do? How did it look? What did the Spirit lead them to? It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. See the generosity in this? In several aspects of sharing their lives, sharing their food, sharing their resources, sharing their faith. And the passage goes on to mention a few more aspects of that. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Because they were devoted to one another and active in their faith, God continued to bless them and grow them. The early church lives lives of generosity because they were led by the Holy Spirit. And we continue the same process today. Another passage to consider is 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18 is the one that's mentioned on the board. Context would lead us a little wider to verses 17 through 19. Talking about realizing the blessings we have on this side of earth, you know, this time, and also our spiritual blessings, the physical and the spiritual Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant nor put their hope in wealth, which is, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. And I thought, enjoyment? That seems to be an odd word in the passage, don't you think? I think there would be a little more spiritual word in there than enjoyment. Well, the Greek is very specific that it's enjoyment. That is that we have good, blessed lives. And that's what God wants us to have. Who richly provides us everything so that we would enjoy the life that he has given us. The second part, command, again, command them to do good. Not just that we would have everything that we need, but command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. We know that God has given us everything, that God has blessed us in so many ways. That leads us to be generous and to be sharing with others. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Being rich in good deeds and generous with wealth is an internal investment. Living the opposite way can lead us away from God. And so we have both aspects in the passage. We're good because God has been good to us. A secondary result of that is God takes notice, and those treasures are also laid up for us in heaven. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9 is the section that says about generosity, but we're going to look at verses 7 through 11. And it starts with that eternal reminder again. The end of all things is near. Sometimes we need that reminder of our mortality and how short life can be and the, the call to do good while we have the opportunity to do good. The end of all things is near, therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled so you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. That seems to be a funny little qualifier, but it's important. The, the heart of being generous needs to be there. Then he goes on to talk about our gifts as well. One of them is to be hospitable. But each one of us should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Being hospitable and serving one another leads to God's praise. And so another reason to be generous is that God would be praised because of it. And then I added in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Well, we're going to look at 3 through 8. The passage is a list of the non-supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. And generosity is mentioned as one of the gifts that we can receive. After the call to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, willingly putting ourselves on the altar, it says in verse 3, 
For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure that God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Starting with the reminder of the one another part, we're all connected to each other. So unity... Verse 6, he starts to talk about the diversity that's also in the church. Although we are all together, we are one body, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. See how that fits well within our aspect of our discussion today. If it is leadership, let him, give, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. We have been gifted to be generous. We have been gifted to generously meet the needs of one another. We can all do that to some level, but some of us are extra gifted as a spiritual gift to be able to be generous and so what a privilege that is to serve the body in that way as well. I've also added in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 11. 2 Corinthians both chapters 8 and 9 are about contributing because the writing was originally that the Gentile congregations were sending an offering to the Jewish congregations who were in need. And so this is about the offering that was collected at that time. But it gives us greater teachings about why we give and how we give, a reminder of one another today, including this in verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, is that different than want sometimes? Yes, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work, as it is written. Each man should give what he has decided. A free will offering. The blessing of if you're gifted to be generous, if you have that opportunity, give it to God. Give it for the work of the kingdom. We have everything that we need. Let's support and encourage one another. And then the quote from Psalm 112, 9, Likely, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Listen to this promise. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Now we know of the historical nature of this passage if the Gentiles are able to be generous and take care of the Jews in Jerusalem, the Jews will need to accept them as full members of the faith. And Christianity becomes united rather than divided. So it's important that they're generous, and it's important that the Jews receive it as an act of generosity. But the same is true with us. Through your generosity, when we're generous to one another, it results in God being praised whether it's in our food hampers this week, whether it's your attendance and support with our memorial this weekend with Fran, being able to support and encourage the family, whatever your act of generosity is, it leads to praise of God. And that's really what we want to have accomplish. Why are we generous to one another? We haven't touched on that aspect. Well, I think generosity is natural when one thing is in place. Isn't it easy to be naturally generous when we love someone? When we love someone and they love us, we're generous. We meet one another's needs. We care for one another. We are generous not because of the command. There were a couple in there, weren't there? Do you need to be told to be generous? Not usually when you love somebody. 
and you care for them, and you have the opportunity. We're generous not because of the command, but because of the internal prompting and the opportunity. James chapter 2 says that caring for one another in this way is a way of making faith active. If you see your brother in need and he's not well fed and not well taken care of and you say, oh, brother, peace be with you, but you don't take care of his need, is that really serving God? No, it's the opposite. So we serve one another, we're generous to one another, and we're generous to God. My intent in the whole series, summarizing everything up, is about one another Christianity. Because we need one another. And we're blessed to have one another. Christianity is not an individual event. It's not a, I'll do it myself and I'll check, check in with you when I need you. It's we need one another. God has built us as a family to connect to one another. My intent in the series was to have us appreciate the one another passages and to take note of how we're living them. How we're living them out within our congregation. How are we doing at these? How am I doing individually? How are we doing as a group? How can we improve? I wanted this to be motivational and encouraging. I think that's an important aspect to say we're doing well in a lot of these and there's lots of this that's a good strength. We should be able to say thank you God for that. What we have is a blessing as a congregation and as a group. I hope that it's been a benefit to your faith and to your spiritual walk why we do any of the series that we do, why we don't just have a one-off sermon usually. We think about something for a while so that we can apply it and pray about it and see it in action and watch God at work. In one another passages, there's way more than what we've looked at, but the concepts are there. So this week, how do we put this into action? I think in order to be a blessing, to be an encourager, to be generous, it helps when we count our blessings. Count your blessings and consider how you've shared them in the last few months. One of the ways that I sometimes do this is I'll even make a list and say, what do I consider as a blessing? Our car? Yes, that's a blessing to have a car. So how have I used that not just for our family? Right? So it's just actually think about it. I consider our food a blessing. How have we used that as more than just us? How have I used, what other blessings do I have? Our education, right? Our freedom. The computer, whatever it is, and just start making a list of the things that I consider a blessing and then ask myself, but how have I used those to bless others? And that helps me get back into making sure that they're being shared. Think about how generous God is to you and let that motivate you to be generous to others. When we're feeling a little stingy, you go back to God and say, but God is always good. Be thankful and thank those who are generous to you. I think that's another application of this. Even if things don't change, it's being thankful and letting other people know that your generosity makes a big difference. But don't just tie generosity to finances. That's a part of it. But let's broaden our mindset and commit to be generous with three T's. God's time, his talent, and his toonies. Who do they belong to? Because well, I couldn't put money as a T, Kira. I had to do toonies. <laughs> Who do they belong to? Whose time is it? Whose talents are they? And whose toonies are they? Not ours. They're his. Even if you consider the tithe of the Old Testament, 10%, that means God said keep 90. That's a good God, right? So how are we doing with those? That's time, talents, and tunies. Are we generous with our appreciation? Can we be more generous with that? Are we generous with our energy? It might be diminishing, but how do you use it? Our encouragement our prayers, our thankfulness, and then just start broadening that list out. How am I generous with what? With my faith. With... And just open your mindset to that concept of generosity. This week also, thank God for these passages and for writing them on our hearts 
not just in the Bible, writing them on our hearts, and thank you for living them among one another. You see my last bold point? What a blessing to have one another. How life would be different to live faith on your own, to be the only one. But we don't have that. We have one another, and we have an amazingly gifted, talented, beneficial group of one another. And God has blessed us with our congregation, and I'm thankful for it. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our congregation. We thank you for the work of the Spirit to change us and to challenge us. We pray that we would become more like you. We thank you for all of these one another passages and a group to apply them with and a group that applies them back to us. We thank you for blessing us so we can be a blessing to one another. We thank you for the health and the growth that you've brought to this congregation. We thank you for the workers of the past and we thank you for the workers in the future. We ask that you would help us to put our faith first and our focus on you and that in all things we would be an encouragement and that you would receive the glory. We thank you for the blessing of this sermon series and may you use it to challenge our hearts and to encourage us to continue to serve you and one another. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.